The footage that you're seeing of the self-cast Ice Nova of Frostbolt's Trickster is taken from the most recent gauntlet, an event that was so grueling and so demanding on builds that only 4 people even killed a single uber boss. And this was the build that I used for the vast majority of the event through all of my progression, all the way into T16s. The damage that I have in this footage though is much less, I think it's around 20% of what I'm estimating for the POB that I'm going to be linking this video and that we're going to be working with today. I did however use the Bitter Demon Gauntlet and I think this is one of the most underrated early game uniques. It is a 3 link but it's actually somewhere closer to like a 7.5 link in terms of raw efficiency even when you take into account giving up an early weapon. While there's a lot of different options for playing Ice Nova or Frostbolts, I think this EBMOM Trickster has so many different things solved right away, from mana cost, having really, really good defenses, especially for mapping, but fantastic multi-hit defense, one step ahead nullifies your need for both chill and freeze, and polymath gives you even more mapping based recovery. Anybody starting with this build, bearing in mind that you do have a two-button playstyle, will really succeed in a league start and have a really smooth progression all the way through to day three. I'm going to get really lazy with this in one take because I don't really want to look at the edit and I don't really want to hear my own voice that much right now. This tree does a lot of travel. First thing to note, I go towards Inveterate. You'll see a lot of early game casters do this now. Um, I just think it's a really smart thing to do. You see I'm still short on dexterity, though I have no attributes on gear, even with this dexterity travel. And trying to suppress cap on this isn't that easy, although I am overcapped, um, assuming like T1 rules, I think I'm on my gear. So there's some flexibility, but I would go for this always. The other thing is that I offer Sovereignty and this pathing instead of going down through here and going for Charisma. Charisma leaves you with a really, really awkward reservation value if you're playing EBMOM, these two keystones, and it only leaves you at negative 2 or negative 3%. You can't even fix it with a reservation jewel. Sovereignty gets you to something that's perfect if you want to run a 50% aura, another 50%, a 25%, and a, and a 10 or a 35%. So in my case, I think I'm running Discipline, Race, and Perma Haste. Really, really nice aura setup. Other things to know on this tree, if you want to in the early game, you can take this uh, Tolerance Wheel and also grab this Mastery for uh, this one. Really helps you overcapture resistances and maps. I ran this through the entire gauntlet. I think it's really good in a lot of casters, especially for hybrid split and you want to have good Chaos Reds early on. Notes to drop if you want to do that, probably this area. I would take this Mastery out. I'd consider dropping some of this stuff, maybe dropping the AoE, maybe dropping Frostwalker. That's probably what you'd be looking to lose. Maybe this... Um, but I do kind of like this. I do like having a lot of evasion while you're mapping. I mean, I don't have my flask enabled, but if you run like an evasion suffix, it really does help out, right? Um, so that's that. One more thing to note, this inversion mastery is how I would choose to play this build. Almost always in the early game. I don't like to play for reduced resistances. I don't like to use like Scorch. I don't like to use Exposure. Even though you do get easy Exposure on a Cold Mastery if you want that. I just think this is going to be a lot more comfortable in a lot of scenarios when monsters have extra Cold Res. If you're running Eater Side Alters and things have like plus 80 Cold Res, this helps out a lot. If um, there's the new Cycling Damage Reduction changes to those rare monsters. So instead of having like Invincibility, now they have basically you're applying Elemental Equilibrium to them. So this Inversion Mastery, really strong to have for sure. Ascendancy wise, I like to start out with one step ahead, always if I can on a trickster. I just think this feels so good. I don't even worry about actually taking Cruel Lab. Um, I just grab EB early on, and then at Merc Lab, I'll grab both of these nodes. Like, you know, maybe like as I'm finishing Act 10, I'll just like, do both labs at the same time if I'm feeling lazy or not. It just depends how things are going. And then I'll take MOM and then run Discipline. And you should be sitting at about like a 1.5k ES pool, depending on your gear, of course, as well. But it should be fairly solid as long as you play for an evasion or an evasion ES hybrid chest. And you can even like have that as a white chest and then just like benchcraft, increase ES, increase evasion on it. But yeah, one step ahead first, almost always, just feels so freaking good during the campaign. Skill gem setup. I don't play intensify. I don't like intensify for this build. It lowers your number of overlaps in practical settings. In pure single target where things are stationary and you're playing with an Arcanist Brown Frostbolt setup, it's fine to do. But right now you can see that my Ice Nova has a 3.7 radius. That's really good. With Intensify at 4 stacks, this goes down to 2.6, which is actually like tiny. It's it's tiny. It's like League Start Righteous Fire kind of AoE. So I don't like doing that. And Energy Leech is actually a really strong support for Trickster. Obviously, you play Echo. This is like a gajillion times damage for self-cast Ice Nova. It's actually why this build is strong. It's because of the Echo with Ice Nova Frostbolt's interaction. Basically, you get free repeats at no cost. It's insane. Grace Disc Haste really nice aura setup one of my favorite things now this build is a little bit short on physical mitigation um, because i'm going for this but as a trickster you have a couple things firstly for gigantic physical attacks armor doesn't really help that much anyway so it's kind of whatever 
Secondly, Trickster has a gigantic pool, so it actually mitigates gigantic physical hits pretty well, all things considered. Now for small hits, you have a ton of recovery layers. You do have ES Overleech, you do have Ghost Dance over here. And for your life pool, just like, you know, press your flask or something. And like, I do play Leech on these gloves later. So I actually like this setup for a Trickster. In certain settings, you'll need to build armor, but I think in the core league, you should be able to probably just skip it entirely. Um, and I do usually when I play this build. Oh boy, there's a lot of things going on here. I kind of forgot what things are. I'm going to assume that Portal's Automation... Yeah, Portal's Automation is linked to Arcane Clinic and Inspiration. Not Frostbling. Bit confusing. These three things are linked. I've just made a really ugly looking POV. The reason why I link those three things is because I would like to proc this Inspiration. So because I'm playing Eldritch Battery and Mind Over Matter, by default, I can't really spend my mana. Arcane Cloak, though, always lets you bypass that. It always spends mana. And then when you have Inspiration Support linked to it, it will always generate one Inspiration Charge. So then, you know, after however many seconds it's going to take to, you know, I think I'm about, like, you know, seven seconds, because it's got the time it lasts, plus the cooldown. So, like, 35 seconds, you'll have your 20 Inspiration, or your five Inspiration Charges, so it should be fine. You do lose a Guard Skill. I don't really care, honestly. Guard Skills are mostly for multi mitigation, or, like, premeditated... Um, planning against big hits, but most PoE players aren't good enough to use uh, guard skills preemptively, and reactively, guard skills actually kind of suck. Shield charge, faster attacks for movement, feels unreal on this. One step ahead, really great. Playing haste full time, really nice. And then the twenty percent from Soul Jinger. This build just feels so freaking good. Over here, a call to arms link with Endearing Cry. This does give you some of your physical mitigation because you do have Endearing charges. Normally, this build is crazy socket starved. But because I'm playing with the Bitter Dream 3 link as my main skill setup, you have space for all these things in a 6-socket chest, you know, over here with a Frost Blink in there as well, and then your gloves, I have this. Divine Blessing Zealous Tree, this can also go for Hatred. So Hatred, I think, can give you more damage in a few settings, especially if you go for a Watcher's Eye. But I think Zealous Tree right now is actually really similar in damage, if not the exact same. But it also gives you a ton of Consecrated Ground uptime because you have so many hits coming out with your repeating Ice Noves and all the Frost Bolts. So... As far as the Frostbolt setup goes, I like to run these supports. I prefer to play self-cast. You can play Arcanist Brand full-time, um, just like switch this with faster casting, and it's definitely acceptable to do. I think it's kind of shitty. Um, if you really care about this and you want to drop the uh, Endearing Cry setup, you could actually put your Frostbolt setup in a 6-link in your chest, and then have this like Arcanist Brand, faster casting, these two prod supports, and a run slower prod. And then you'll have really good overlaps on bosses immediately, even before you have a lot of Frostbolts flying around your screen. Little visual clarity build though, heads up. So when I'm not doing that though, I kind of want to play a Arcanist brand setup as long as I'm self-casting this, and this would be Assassin's Mark, Punishment, and Frost Shield. Now, you know, if you play Arcanist brand on bosses, then just self-cast these three buttons. It's really not that bad. And Frost Shield's disabled right now. You can see that with my Frost Shield on, my defenses actually go up a lot in terms of max hit. And this is not a build that focuses on max hit, right? This is a build that's all about multi mitigation, as Trickster is, you know? Um, I would really get used to pressing Frost Shield. It's a really strong skill. It lets you tank, like, just so much bullshit. It's insane. Gearing-wise. So, I've put a bunch of items in this POV. The one thing I want to mention right off the bat before I forget, I would always run a Surgeon's Diamond Flask. It's really efficient. Don't play, um, sorry, I say Surgeon's. This is Specialist. It's that prefix that says you get a Flask Charge on Crit Strike. Don't run this on multiple flasks. You don't actually have enough crits, and there's also an internal cooldown that's globally shared. Uh, sorry, global cooldown that's shared across all flasks for that. So just be wary there. Um, let's go over these rares first. Bitter Dream, core unique for the build, very build enabling. You can see my damage goes from 4 mil to 15 with this item. Super OP, drops all the time, really easy to get. It doesn't need a 6 link. I mean, I'm kind of baiting myself into playing this. I don't really want to play this build because I want to play Pathfinder, but... Man, the scepter is crazy. Shield, max is pretty strong, but really I'm looking for increased damage. Crit chance is not that great on the shield. You could also go for like a suppression base, but I mean, offensive mods are really nice because you have so much suppression from elsewhere. Double fist taken as, res, suppression, that sort of thing. Pretty pretty generic looking. The chest is important. Um, you're looking for defense prefixes, so hybrid evasion ES increase, hybrid evasion ES flat. And then an open prefix is what I prefer. You could look for try prefix, but easy ways to craft this. Delve, and Fossils, or sorry, Fossils and Harvest, actually. And then, yeah, I mean, if you get Suppression, that's great. But you can see I'm overcapped here, and there's still space for Suppression elsewhere, like having none on the shield. Gloves. 
This is where the first focus mod appears. This is fo or I guess the second one because it's focus DD. But I run focus attack cast speed. Really great for that burst window. And because you have a gigantic pool, you're actually able to sustain your ES properly on this build. Pretty much only on this kind of build. Maybe on Inquisitor sometimes. Even when you do have your focus window. Unnerve, great offensively. Cold damage, really good just to have a bit more life recovery. And when you have lingering frostbolt projectiles and ice nova, quite strong. Over here, brittle ground is the offensive mod. Boots or boots. I mean, I prefer Onslaught on kill, like, later in the game. Early on, I play a Silver Flask. I don't play Taste of Hate, but it is what it is. Amulet. This, I would almost always opt for multi over plus one. It's just really easy to find a multi amulet. You can even, like, reforge crit, honestly, to try to get this kind of thing. But it's actually really easy to find a multi amulet. So, you know, just look for that. Um, this craft. With my specific tree... This AoE craft at 11% or 12% increased AoE actually gives me plus 2 radius to my Ice Nova Frostbolts. I would definitely use that here. Ring. One of these wants to be another focus mod. This is Focus Shock. Uh, really great to have. And then down here, just like, I have this weird Giga Res Ring. There's like suffixes to makeup, obviously, but I'm just isolating for offensive gear. As I always do in my POVs. You know, figure out your res. It's not that hard. You also have actually Prac App open on this tree. Oh, I actually take it. There's actually a lot of resistances on the tree and loss suppression. It shouldn't be that hard to fix your suffixes on gear. And then finally, one of the most important modifiers on this whole build is this Focus While Lucky mod. I think it's really, really, really strong. This, this crit chance Lucky Focus. It's, it's crazy, right? Yeah, like 20% more damage. And you can see that when my Focus is down, I'm like quite a bit lower on DPS. I press Focus and it you know goes up by like 7 million. It's, it's actually huge. It's almost doubling your damage. You don't need this much damage to clear maps. You don't even need this much damage to clear maps. I played with my map clear DPS on that build during Gauntlet with everything having double HP was like, I don't know, 2 million or so. And then my boss DPS around like 3, 4 million. You'll feel totally fine with this setup. And if you can't kill bosses in this window, like non-Ubers and stuff, then, then you kind of just suck. You're like not holding down Ice Nova or something. I actually don't know what's happening there. Other flasks, quartz, because I don't have a source of phasing on kill, but I can go on a bestial if you want, and then you play Quicksilver. Um, I probably want to go for granite. Jade flask is pretty solid, and taste of fate's really nice later. And honestly, like the Fizzmit isn't even that bad for this build. Final thing to note, I do have quite a few uniques in this POB, and they're just like good options for the early game. I like Restless Ward. I think it's really great, especially if you like throw in Blood Rage or like a. Uh, I mean, with the Mark Mastery, you can't get your Frenzy Generation and stuff. This actually feels really good, and it also better enables your Enduring Cry setup. Um, I originally had Enduring Charges ticked because I figured with Enduring Cry and Restless Ward, you actually have a pretty good chance at sustaining your Endurance Charge uptime. Not your Enduring Cry uptime, but your Endurance Charge uptime. I actually can just unclick this thing. It's kind of weird. Hyperboreus. Um, really cheap belt. Nobody wants this, but it's really rare. And it's really fucking good. It will basically give you max chill right away. And it gives you a lot of increased damage. You do lose life on the belt. But I think it's fairly solid if you like, you know, don't want to look for your own belt. There's also a focus CDR on this, which is like really great. Honestly, I think this thing's super good. I just like don't want to put it in necessarily because it is rare. But it costs one chaos. Nobody wants it. Lightning Larnus. This is more rare, more expensive. Also worse probably than a rare shield. But it does synergize really well with gifts from above. Because this gives you block, ch block chance. It gives you increased damage. It kind of, you know, the rarity is not nothing. 45 rarity in the early game is actually really strong. And it pairs really well because you're a high hit rate, high crit rate um, caster. So you'll pretty much always have Consecrated Ground all around with you. Just another option to look for. In the late game, I think things like, or I guess not late game, but mid game, Mark the Shaper, that sort of thing is pretty good. So, pretty simple build. There were actually more mechanics in this thing than I remember. Um, hopefully, I managed to cover everything. If you have questions about this setup, just come and ask me. I'm pretty comfortable on it and I pretty much know most of the answers as far as the early game goes right away just let me know I mean I'll be like pretty much serially online until the end of the week so yeah bye